Hello, Acron fans! Another match? Beautiful map of Balboa Dunes. Brand new map from King John the Sixth, who is in fact our player right here in the three o'clock position. We are sorry, nine o'clock position. My block apparently is in reverse. Now, the twelve o'clock position is Rock Crystal, allied with Khanov in the three o'clock position, the actual three o'clock position, and the six o'clock position is Pickley, who is allied with King John the Sixth. And everyone is going for a perfect start. This is a rather common tactic in Akron, where everyone basically pauses at the very start of the game and decides everything they're going to do right away. So they try to avoid any sort of mistakes, any lost time, a completely perfect start is the ideal. So it looks like, ultimately, we have Rockers are going for Vekir, we have Grekim for Sakhanov, we have for Pickley, Vekir, and for King John VI, we have Siso. So, rather interesting match, so Vekir and Grekim versus Siso and Vekir. So at this point, we have Rather economic build from Pickley, from King John the Sixth, and from oh I don't know actually not about Rock Crystal. He's only for five RPs. I'm not sure he, he is stuck in the past though, so he might be going for something different. I'll just double check. And it looks like wow, actually it looks like for Stakhanov he's going for a rather aggressive build. He's pushing his he's got let's see here an Octa or yeah Faro and a Seppi pushing towards the middle. I'm not sure if he's going to be building a Octo Rush or if he's going to be building wow this is really interesting match. It looks like he's going for. Very quick rush with the Seppi and the Faro. He's probably going to be able to push up Octos. Probably, maybe a couple Octopods as well. But he, I don't know. He doesn't have a whole lot of resources. Just going to double check. Looks like he is going a bit further past to try to fix some stuff up. And I'm just going to double check about a minute ago because Rock Crystal, I'm not sure what he's doing. So it looks like Rock Crystal is also going for a very aggressive build. He's sending his Teth Gear and Zion Gear to attack while building another QP RP. So at this point, all players except for Sahana are going for mildly economic builds but with military focus with their main attack and it looks like actually both players so it looks like Rock Crystal and King John the Sixth are going for aggressive attacks with their infantry but it looks like King John the Sixth is going to be coming up ahead special ops are really powerful against infantry and that's going to do a lot of damage so at this point looks like the Faro is not been or Faro had regenerated it looks like Octo is being built so I'm not sure if he's going to be building a triad out of those three and just rushing from the center or if he's going to be building any more any more RPs at all. It's rather unsafe the way he has it now, but he might be going for a very quick rush. And at this point, King John VI has gone for Factory and Importer, so he's probably going to go for a Lancer rush. And he is attacking Rock Crystal, while Pickley hasn't actually really done much. He's gone for largely economic build. Three three resource processors on QP, five on, or six on Liquid Crystal. Wow, that's a very economic build. So he's basically using Kano's, or sorry, he's using King John VI's rush, because it's King John and Pickley that are allied, using their, his rush to cover his own attack. I'm just going to go back just a minute or so, just double check, make sure that Rock Crystal is doing anything different right now. So it looks like, no, nothing's changed, but Sahanov has changed a lot. He's building, wow, he is building a massive Seppi. He's got half a dozen Seppis coming towards his opponent, or presumably coming towards his opponent, and that's going to be very powerful. Seppis are, they're largely anti-air units, but they're still quite powerful against ground units, so this is going to be a very interesting rush. At the same time, King John the Sixth, like I said, he's attacking, or he was attacking Rock Crystal. It looks like his attack was deflected entirely. Uh, Partly defected, partly aborted, so he kept the Marine at home from the looks of it. But, I'm just going to double check, it looks like he is in the past. And he does have, no actually he got a second Marine. Sorry, my mistake. He actually started with a second Marine, he's setting his, his, one of his Marines and his Special Ops, he started with, an, he has another Marine as well. So, his attack was deflected though, that's the important part. And so Hanov, as I mentioned before, is building a bunch of Octos, so he can go back to where I, actually I'm not sure if he's going to be building anything more, because King John VI, will know about this attack very quickly. And it looks like, I'm just going to go follow up here. This is the one, about a minute and a half in the past, roughly where we were before. So it looks like, actually I'm just going to go back right to where we were before, when the Seppis were being built, which is right now, okay. So this is where we were. The Seppis were being built, and it looks like all the forces are getting out of regeneration mode. So as we know, as we just saw, the Seppis, when they're done, will start just rushing towards King John VI with everything else. It's a very powerful Grecum rush. I've seen this a couple times, and actually, this was, I think, the first match I cast with Grekin actually had a big rush like this, and it was a Google Frog match, I believe. Very good player, that. But at this point, we see Sakhanov going for the Grekin rush, and it's even more powerful rush with far more units, Seppis, and, every, and of course, the Lancer rush. That's not going to do much good against the Seppis. Like I said, it's four. Seppis are anti-air. So you see, the Lancer's getting completely, completely decimated. Or, well, okay, it's only one of it, so I can't really destroy the tent, but still, it's getting completely destroyed. Now, the Factor's getting attacked. Everything's getting attacked. There's a huge rush going on. And at the same time, it looks like King John VI, he is just hanging out outside of Rock Crystal's base. Rock Crystal's building a bunch of infantry, he's probably going to go support, and actually I know he's going to go support, those chat messages about it. Pickley is building up a depot, he's got some infantry coming up, he's probably going to be using the infantry to build vehicles, 
And at this point, we're seeing, wow, oh my goodness, the importer's gone. Oh, wow. Okay, so CISO, King John 6 is doing very poorly at the moment. He's gone back in time. He's going to change some stuff. I'm just going to double check to make sure he hasn't changed anything that's too important because if he does, I'm just going to change my cast entirely. He's built a mech now, so the mech is going to help out a bit. He's built that instead of a lancer. He's going to be building up more mechs, but I don't know how much good that's going to do. Mechs are really anti air units, and they are not going to be doing very good, very well against this large mass of Grekum. And it looks like Grekum are just going for attack. Once again, the, C the import is completely destroyed. Looks like we haven't got anything coming up from Rockers at the moment. He's getting some infantry up, but the CISO forces of King John the Sixth are getting completely obliterated. Just this mass of Seppies and Octo and Faro support. That is just insane. So at this point, King John the Sixth doesn't really have much of a chance. He All he can do is hope that Pickley gets some vehicles, something that he can do to help support, because otherwise he is not going to be able to get out of this mess. This is huge! This is huge! Look, he's getting rid of the factory now! And once that factory's gone, there's going to be almost nothing that King John the Sixth can do. But this importer, yeah, sure, he's got some marines, he's got some infantry. The infantry are actually... but what infantry does he have? He has his marines dead. His marine and special ops up here are dead. Everything's dead. He's got... Okay, now the factory's gone. Oh my goodness, I don't know what King John the Sixth can do to get out of this right now. I can't imagine what he could do. He could get... Maybe if he resources chronoporting in the far future and pulls back, but he doesn't have much time to do that at all. This red time wave, that's... That's his destruction on that time wave. He doesn't have much time, and I don't know if he's planning on going for that. He's not going to the future to do that. So at this point, all I can hope for is that these vehicles, the Zion Turcher and Zion Pulsar coming in from Pickley will be able to help out, but I don't know how much that's going to do. Because at this point, he's already lost a factory. He's get, getting another factory in the south of space, though. But he's lost his main factory. He's losing another importer. He's got, oh my goodness, huh, wow, the audacity. He's building up a Seppi and a Faro out of the Progenerate within the base of King John VI. This is insane. I mean, I've seen this before, but this is just nuts. I mean, like, like I said, it's totally audacious. I mean, the amount of octane he's going to be getting up, but the Seppies as well, I mean, this, is, this is insane. This is where it gets really interesting in Egg Run. It's something you can do, especially with Grekum. I mean, Sganov is actually rather not so much a big Grekum fan. He tends to criticize the way they build sometimes, but man, they can be powerful when they want to be. So it looks like this point, King John the Six doesn't have any chance at all. He hasn't got, he hasn't a snowball chance in hell at this point. And it looks like Pickley is going to try to hope, just try to hold his own. I mean, it is still a team game. And I'm pretty curious what Pickley is doing. I hate to get rid of this excitement, but we kind of can see how it's going for King John 6. So Pickley at the moment, building in the future, he's actually attacking the Grecan base of Sakana in the future. So Pickley in the future has destroyed Sakana, but at this point, I don't know what it matters because, I mean, Sakana hasn't, he's not done with King John 6 yet. And King John 6, back where we were before, King John 6 is building up a bit. And wow, actually, okay, Club Design Trickery is going to do some damage, but I mean, once this far, all I need to do is get this faro down here, but oh man, the faro is regenerating. Oh wow, this nine treasure might actually be able to help out a bit, because that faro is not prepared, and he doesn't have, he's not using an octave to regenerate, so he does not have any faros coming out, so he only has one faro. Once that's gone, he's going to be in trouble. At this point, ah, here's the attack. So there's an attack coming in from Pickley onto Sakana's base. This is the attack we saw before, near to the present, but now, of course, it's closer to the past, because time has passed. But at this point, we are seeing Sakana... He's going for a rather powerful rush, but he's also left some base completely unprotected, and this is going to be very deadly. So, unless Sakhanov does respond to this, and he might respond to this, but I kind of doubt it. He does He does have the Faro up here, but he hasn't built any spare Faros. He's got the Octopod, but like I said, this this Zion Turcher, very powerful and completely cloaked, completely invisible. There is a Faro actually coming down here, so he does actually have a spare, spare Faro, luckily for him, but he's going to need to be able to get that Octopod down here as well, and that Faro is now dead, so the Zion Turcher is going to have to... Oh man, this Zion Turcher is going to be able to do a ton of damage. At the same time, in, Gar in the Grecan base, we have Zion Turcher, Zion Pulsar, and a couple Zion Deers from the looks of it. No, actually, this is a Teth here. He's got huge attack coming in here. There's an Octo coming down here to try to support, but I'm not sure how much he's going to do. And looks like, I'm not sure if Rock Crystal has actually done anything yet. Closer to about a half second in the present, this is about two minutes later from where we are. So two minutes from now, he does again. He is going to have Sh Shin Turcher, Zion Pulsar, but I don't know how much good that's going to do. At this point, it looks like the match is going to end up being between Pickley and Rock Crystal, but we'll see. Back two and a half minutes in the past, King John Six is still falling apart. Actually, King John Six is completely rebuilt. Oh my goodness, when do you do this? Okay, it looks like I'm just going to review a second. So it looks like four minutes in the past or so. Yeah, he actually. Wow, I totally missed this. He's actually been doing this for quite some time. He completely rebuilt the contingency base. That's kind of hard to see on this map, I suppose. So yeah, it looks like five minutes in the past, or six minutes ago, he actually built a contingency base. And now, back where Stakhanov is focused on, so this is about two and a half minutes in the past, back where we were, he's got a contingency base built up. So at this point, he's actually coming out ahead. Stakhanov's all-in rush is completely backfired. So it looks like Stakhanov's in a really bad spot. I mean, mainly that was a pretty exciting rush, but gotta say, he did not have the resources to keep it going for very long. And it looks like, yeah, the Zion Turcher, 
really, really paid for itself. That cloaking is an awesome ability, especially when they don't have enough pharaohs up to build. So this is going to be quite insane. So I think, really, Rock Crystal's in a tight position right now. He's got Zion Pulsar. He's got Pickley's forces to fight. He's got King John's backup forces to fight. And Sakhanov has surrendered, so Sakhanov has lost. His all-in rush failed. But very, very interesting. Very exciting to watch, nonetheless. That was a really neat game, but a very good comeback. And that's what team games are all about. Your teammates coming in, saving you from almost certain deaths. So, so King John VI has rebuilt. Pickley does have a very powerful base going up. He's got, well, it's kind of foundation support, the vehicles he has. Foundations, in case you aren't familiar, foundations provide power, and vehicles require power. We don't have, although at this point, he doesn't have enough vehicles to use up all of his power. But if he did, he'd start running out of energy for his vehicles, for teleportation if he had that. It's rather problematic. So you do want to have power, make sure you have enough of that. At this point, I think he's just using those foundations to prepare for building other things, building aerial control centers, slip gates, bastions, whatever he needs. So at this point, he does have a couple more Zion Turches in his base. He's got a big army coming in, flank on the right flank, and CISO from uh, the CISO forces of King John VI on the left flank coming in, and the bottom of the Lancer. So Rock Crystal is in a really tight spot. He's got the Shin Turcher here, but that is a bomber unit. As soon as it's not coming up to attack. He does have the Tethbeer, or no, Shinbeer here. Shinbeer is a special, not really a, he's more of a generalist unit. It doesn't do much more damage to ground or air, but it's also dead, so who cares? And another Shinbeer is out here. It has helped out. It is, however, a cloak stacker, which is really useful, as is the Shin Turcher. So the cloaking will not be quite as useful, but still, this is a two-on-one situation. Rockers is really going to have to pull something out of his hat if he wants to be able to get anything done, because at this point, he is at a disadvantage. His teammate went for a total all-in, and he's trying to pick up the slack on this. Trying to completely get what he can out of the scraps of his teammate's defeat, and I don't know what he's going to be able to do, because at this point, like I said, it's a 2-on-1 situation. Admittedly, King John VI did have to rebuild, so he's a bit behind, but this is still going to be rather problematic for him. So it looks like King John VI is coming in with the turret. He's actually got a turret here. He's coming in with the turret on as well. But So he's blocked off the left flank with the turret, so this is going to be really tricky for Brock Crystal to get out of. Pickley as well, he's... Still has units in his base. Let me just fast forward a bit because nothing really exciting is happening at the moment, and it looks like most of the players are focusing closer to the future. Actually, I'm going to double check because it looks like Rock Crystal is focusing on the present. Now, this might be a bit shocking, so I'm just going to go to the present and warn you. And it looks like, okay, Rock Crystal is going for an attack later on. So he is focusing on the present to make sure he gets an attack, and I'm not sure exactly why because, I mean, these forces are in the past, but these forces in the past aren't doing much right now. It looks like I'm just going to fast forward to see if they are doing anything at the moment. It looks like King Gun 6 is just trying to prep up, get some bases going. Get it. Oh, he is getting a Chrono Porter. Okay, now I see why he's attacking. He's getting a Chrono Porter, and he's going to probably send units back in the unplayable pass. So I guess we see here, Rock Crystal strategy right now is to try to get rid of this Chrono Porter. But at this point, Pickley is building a second base as well. Oh my goodness, so Pickley has an expansion. CISO, or actually can't CISO. King John VI, playing CISO, has his main base. He actually has his old main base as an expansion, and oh, I apologize, I'm missing him. Exciting battle right now. Okay, so exciting battle, ho! Oh, we have, at this point, the Shinters are coming in, taking care of, making sure we're going to turret. Tornado's coming up, it's not going to be able to do much against these Shinters, even though they're both bomber units, so the Tornado is completely outnumbered. It's not going to be able to last very long. Zion Pulse is going back, completely ignoring that Tornado, just going straight for the base, straight for the juggler. And it looks like, at this point, Pickley is trying to make use of his expansion. He does have a Bastion, he does have a Slipgate, which has two Bastions as well, so both King John VI and Pickley are going for time travel. But I don't know how much good that's going to be able to do. They need to really pre-enforce their units very hard. And I don't know what they really have at this point. They aren't building a lot with... I mean, they have... I mean, look at this. King John 6 has two factories. He's not using either of them very much. And it looks like... It looks like Pickley has taken advantage of his production abilities. But not King John the 6, which is really odd. So as it stands, Rock is coming in, sweeping on the left flank with a... Large attack, he's got three Zion Pulsers, three Shin Turchers, and that's a massive anti-ground force. And this factory, this front factory here is not going to be dealing, doing much, but this time King Chun 6 has gone back to the past, he's gone two and a half minutes in the past, and it looks like he isn't actually really changing much. He's got his Tornado retreated a bit, I think he's going to try to get this mech here as well to help out, fight air, but actually he's helping out fighting this, well it's not doing much at all. So at this point, he did deal a bit more damage, but this is not going as well for Rock Crystal, but still, he is doing a lot of damage. He's continuing, he's, no, he's not actually continuing to build up. He'll have to go and rebuild that. He's wasting resources, I'm sure. Anyway, going back down to the factory, and it looks like he is going to be attacking again. He's going to fast forward through this just to double check, because we've already seen this, but he does destroy the factory, and we're going to see Pickley here. Pickley with his production capacity. Pickley getting a rather, like I said before, he's got very well, oh wow, that's a lot. 
So this is Zion Pulsar is the lead of an army of about a dozen units at this point. It's quite a large army for vector vehicles, and it looks like at this point we have we see here Rock Crystal is fighting, getting this Chrono Porter, but the Chrono Porter has sent the units back about four minutes in the past, and it looks like at this point, so the Chrono Porter units are coming in, going to support this attack. This is going to be a very, very interesting attack. I'm actually gonna, not going to disturb it too much. I'll have to watch it later, but people have been rather annoyed by people, by observers disturbing, because I can change what happens and make things happen that happened in the past happen earlier than they should have or than they would have visible to the other players. It's a bit tricky, but the important thing is King John 6 has gone back to the past, so this attack is not entirely going to go as it seems. There is going to be a lot of units coming to support, and unless Rock Crystal can come in and destroy that Chrono Porter in time, or rather he didn't because he would have destroyed it before, and he didn't destroy it yet, but the Chrono Porter already did his job, he's not going to be able to do too much damage. So at this point we see it was in about... this far back in the past, we have the Chrono Porter continuing to recharge. So as it stands, this is when the Chrono Porter would have been the target. Yeah, so here we have the units that were Chrono Porter in the past, are coming in and dealing a ton of damage. This is this is the battle once again, except with new units from the future. So the units in the future are doing a, are getting their money's worth. They're taking out one Shin Churchill, they're taking out two Shin Churchill at this point. There's two of the bombers out, two of the design pulses out as well. So or sorry, one of the design pulses out. Design pulses are treating a bit. And it looks like at this point there is a lot of damage being done by these tanks. These tanks are fairly good against Aryans, but they're good against everything. So at this point, there is a direct attack on this factory, but I don't know how much good that's going to do. He would really need to attack this Chrono Porter, but he doesn't really have a chance at this point. And King Dawn 6 looks like he has actually sent back another cadre of units. Or at least he's gone back and passed to double check on his cadre of units. And as you can see, there is nothing that Rock Crystal can do at this point. He has lost all the units that he has sent, and he doesn't have any units more coming in. He didn't actually make use of his production capacity when he had it, unfortunately. So he's going he was focusing too hard on the attack, not enough on production. And it looks like King John VI has completely repelled this attack from the past. So once that time comes, that's going to be kind of embarrassing. And it looks like Pickley has done something similar. It's hard to tell. But if I had to guess, I'd say he has sent units back in the past. He does have... He was looking at the unplayable past for some reason. Usually when people look at the unplayable past, that means they've chronoported to the unplayable past. And it looks like King John as well has been chronoported to the unplayable past. Once like, Or actually couldn't have. But let's see what's happening right in the future. So this is what happened. This is where we were left off before. But now King John VI has repelled the attack. And Rock Crystal is building up, trying to rebuild his army, trying to rebuild what he has. And there's an attack coming in. Or, sorry, it's RPs coming in on the right flank. There's no attack coming in, but it looks like Pickley, I'm guessing, has Chrono Wars and units in the past. Because he has units, but he doesn't have them right here and right now. And it looks like back in the past is right here. And now, once again, Pickley has not... You'll excuse me, I'm just going to check around and see if I can find where Pickley has left his forces, because Pickley seems to have lost his forces, and I do not know where they could be found. So at this point, it looks like the Chrono Porter, or the Slipgate, rather, is not being used at the moment. I'm not sure exactly where his forces went. It looks like he is paused back in the past right here, where they presumably set as their destination, and it looks like he's continuing going back in the past. I'm not sure exactly what he is doing, but... No, it looks like... Okay, we do have units back in the past. I guess... Oh, I see what he did. He accidentally chronoported his units on top of his other units, causing them to basically chronofrag themselves. Very much like telefragging in most games. Except it's with chronoporting. So at this point, I'm not sure if he's going to undo that chronoporter knob, but back to where we were. Rock Crystal is sending out a new attack, and he's lost one of his Shinstrushers. Two more Shinstrushers are coming in, trying to get rid of these forces, and admittedly, luckily for him, this chronoporter... Ha Actually, no, wait. This chronoporter wasn't destroyed, so... Yeah, he is going to have to deal with Chrono Porter units in the past. And I'm not sure exactly what's going on. Unless the King Gun 6 has... He appears to probably have sent units more back in the past. I can't see any glowing units indicating that they have Chrono Porter back now, but they may have anyway. At any rate, he can do it. If he ever gets in a tight spot now, he can just Chrono Porter units back to save himself. And at this point, back where we were, he has in fact Chrono Porter units. And it looks like his units Chrono Porter were... See, he continues to port units. He had chronoported units back now. I assume this is one of the tanks that were chronoported. And here we go. Yes, one of the tanks is being chronoported. So he has another tank supporting right here. So another tank supporting this attack. And it looks like these two Zion Churches actually surprisingly not cloaked Zion Churches, despite the fact that they could. I, okay, the Tornot is a detector, but still, once the Tornot is dead, Zion Churches are going to be able to deal a lot of damage if they were cloaked. But actually, no, there's too many Tornots. My mistake. So yeah. At this point, it looks like Rock Crystal is in a very tight spot. I'm not sure what he's going to be able to do. King John VI is continuing to send units back into the past, as we can see, and there's a lot of damage being dealt from that. So back back in the slightly more recent past, 
King Dome 6 is sending his tanks out to attack to attack Rock Crystal. Rock Crystal's Bastion is trying to deal with, with them as it can, but it's not dealing a whole lot of damage. At this point, the Bastion is going to be going down, and there isn't a lot of army for Rock Crystal. He is expanding to the top left corner, but at this point, Pickley has two bases, and yeah, two bases, because his main has been exhausted. King John VI has two bases. His main has not yet been exhausted, although it's partially exhausted, and his main attack is approaching. So at this point, Rock Crystal does not have any way of chronoporting, while Pickley and King John VI both have methods of chronoporting. And at this point, they are not going to be able to do much damage because, it, or rather, they're going to be dealing all the damage. Rock Crystal will be able to do no damage at all. He's this is his last stand right now, unless he gets a Chrono sometime in the future, which I highly doubt he's going to do. And it looks like he's just deploying infantry, so he cannot possibly upgrade his Chrono Porting tech while deploying infantry. He's getting some Zion Churches out, but he cannot do that much with what he has. So at this point, this seems to be Rock Crystal's last stand. It was a valiant effort, though, but unfortunately, losing Sakana at the very beginning with a very exciting all-in rush, very very fun play, but unfortunately not the most robust. We see that Rock Crystal is trying to hold his own. So, he did a very valiant fight, but it looks like Chrono Porters just won it. Admittedly, what would have been really cool is if he'd gone back around using this middle section here, because he didn't have to go through the lane. He could have just gone around beside the lane, come back here, and then attack from inside the base. If he's expected, well, once he saw the Chrono Porter, though it may have, it was rather close to the unplayable pass at that point anyway. However, it would have been a very interesting play had we seen that. It would have been very neat. We got another foundation up going, and oh, it looks like Chrono Porting. He's going to go back and review this. So it looks like at this point there were some units Chrono Ported in the past, or at least extra units brought into play. Not Chrono Ported though, it doesn't look like. But yeah, more units coming in, and it looks like this is just. Yeah, so Rock Crystal has declared GG. He has surrendered. But it looks like his base, yeah, completely destroyed. Valiant definitely on his part for a one-on-two match. I mean, he managed to drag out a one-on-two match for nine minutes. That is pretty impressive. So, gotta say, kudos to him, but that was the game. So I hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching.